Thank you for your endless dedication and your love for this town and the people living in it. You truly are a one-of-a-kind person, and we have been honored to have you serving us. It is something that I know you don't get to hear often from those who do not understand the dedication you've put in, so I wanted to tell you thank you. I want to thank you for your, not 31 years of service, but 34 years of service. So thank you for recently removed from the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department by fellow members. The reason of action occurred during a grant request when an error was made in typing in the proper email address on the state's behalf. This is a grant that would help benefit our department. When an email is typed in wrong, even, I would appreciate it if you don't grant, thank you. Even by one letter, messages will not be received. This was voiced to the other members, uh, and it was then fixed, and information was sent over. Members of our current fire department were seeing accosting citizens of this community in a local restaurant in Park on May 4th, 2019 after this year's cash bash. They were being accosted only because they knew and were in relation with my father. They were also my family. This is a public facility and I ask why? Why did you do this? It's also been sent that letters were sent to people um, who also knew my father saying that they were no longer allowed to be on premise of the volunteer fire department unless for voting and I do ask what your probable cause was. This is a public facility and as being a public facility and to being a virtual volunteer fire department, do you have probable cause to keep anybody from stepping on a premises? A volunteer is a thankless, painless job. So I always thank my volunteers. So thank you volunteers. so that nobody was in contact with my father. This is a violation of volunteers' personal lives. They do not get paid for, for you guys to request for Community day was something that my father absolutely loved to do. Um, he would walk up and down the street, introduce himself. I'm sure all of you have seen him walking up and down the street. He took pride in Bridgeville and always wanted the best for Bridgeville. Um, and he, just loved everybody being here in this one community. His goal in life was to have one community, one fire department, one police officer, or one police department, one EMS, one community, all of the residents, <coughs> all one. I don't think that that's the case anymore. On community day, I was told that a resident was with his granddaughter and they were enjoying the day and they wanted to see the fire trucks so badly. But not one firefighter got up and arose to this occasion to show them the trucks. And this is something that my father loved to do, only because he saw us as children playing on the trucks and giggling and laughing, and it's so cool to see, and nobody stood up. They sat on their phones. I want to share with you some emergencies that impacted him um, and changed his life, and a lot of you can remember Chestnut Street, May of 2003. A house exploded. <laughs> this occurred on the weekend of Cash Bash 2003. My father spent 10 days at this call. Go come home and sleep, eat, go right back. He never stopped. And the first words that came out of his mouth when I asked him about a call that changed his life was this one, and he said, I shouldn't be alive. He said that the feeling that he felt from the blast of the impact only being 30 feet away from a house is something he never wants to feel again. Something he doesn't wish on anybody to feel. <coughs> he said, the feeling that shook me from impact is one I can't describe, and one I wish to never feel again. But there was no time to stop to think of his life. There were people that needed to be saved and the fire needed to be put out. He had to push on. His focus changed. What did he need? Who did he need? And what was the next step? All of this, I mind you, occurred again on the cash bash night. Neighboring department fire chief said, you didn't miss a beat. I could see the terror on your face, but you didn't stop. You knew what needed done, and when you called over the radio for help, we all heard you. This was the first naturally causing gas explosion that ended up involving people from across the country to come in and investigate. And I don't know if you guys remember, but day was seen in, at night for three days while the gas burned in the air. 
And then we talk about the floods and the changes of the, you know, Baldwin Street always flooding. And he remembers the Budweiser truck in 2013 that was submerged in water and one resident found it to be a safe zone. She stood on that truck with her cat until being rescued. He said if that truck wasn't there, the waters would have pulled her to her death. We started to change protocol in Bridgeville for the floods, and then the flood occurred last year. Multiple departments came in for mutual aid with boats. Over 40 to 50 people were saved alone by boats. The protocol changed. The creeks were dredged, and potential flooding in Bridgeville was decreased significantly. Even changes to the high rises, the protocol in getting to an emergency that occurred in a high rise was built by my father. We got a new ladder truck for that. He was able to find funding for the ladder truck. And if I don't know if anybody knows this being a virtual resident, then my father always had your best interest in mind. Because with having a ladder truck, that keeps our home insurance down. He too is also a resident of Bridgeville. He also built mutual aid. By building mutual aid with our neighboring departments, we were able to call in for help and vice versa. Coverage has always been found for our town when Bridgeville would be out of commission even for a few hours. And none of this was for social events. Bill never over exaggerates emergencies, someone said. He knows what he's up against and what he's not. He knows when help is warranted and when it isn't. Our father worked endlessly to ensure that Bridgeville was up to standards with their practices. You can never stop learning, and that's something he totally understood. One of his mentors said that he always put Bridgeville first. He wanted the best for Bridgeville. He wanted the best fire protection services for this town. That's something he took pride in. He also created the Char West Chief Organization, where he would get together with 20 different communities and their fire chiefs and their firefighters to instill the best fire protection services around, to make it uniform. What did you see that we didn't see? How can we make this better? How should we expect this in the future? Can I save more lives with this? When I sat down and began writing this speech, I quickly realized just how much my father has done for this community. There's also so much more that he does every day that we don't even notice. He took a job at our Bridgeville Borough so that he is more available to this community. He has loved and enjoyed serving this community for 34 years. He thanks this community for allowing him to serve and protect. The friendships and families he has gotten to know have truly changed his life. The words of encouragement and support that were given to me on behalf of my father have all been so heartwarming and have truly touched me. He has taught my family and his fellow brothers of the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department many lessons, some of which are to expect the unexpected. And he appreciates every single one of them. Nothing should be or can be taken for granted. Sorry. I am asking the community to please continue to support our first responders, volunteers, and each other. I ask that the Bridgeville Borough take into consideration the changes that have broken the trust between the residents, the mutual aid departments, and our own Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department. How do we ensure that our safety is at the new chief's utmost priority when the trust has been broken between the community? How do we ensure that our safety is the number one priority over social media? And how do we know that they will be there when called, even if we've had a relation with Bill Julia? Am I going to be safe? I've been told that after 20 years of service, you become a life member. My father has been 34 years fired, fired. His life membership has been taken away. I asked the council, can this happen? After life membership of 20 years, can you take that away? My father would like um, me to tell everybody again to thank you. And he wants me to remind all of his members that he fought side by side, that you guys were his brotherhood and he would have done anything for you. He helped you find jobs. He helped you move in and out of your houses. He helped you when you had marriage issues. He would do anything for you guys. And the betrayal sets in. I end this with the fireman's prayer. When I'm called to duty, God wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me to embrace a child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout and quickly and efficiently put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to my fate I may lose my life, please bless with your protecting hand my children and wife. And the last thing that I'm going to say is the firefighter's oath. My duty is to protect those I serve from whatever danger they may face. 
whether it be fire, demon, or angel. No matter the danger, I will protect the people to the best of my ability. I am but a servitor of the people. My duty is to those who I serve and to no one else. I serve the people without fear, without remorse, without fail. My duty is to the people. By my fireman's oath, I am bound to protect those who are in danger, those in times of need, those who I would serve. My father has followed all of this. Thank you, Dad, for your 34 years of service to this community. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Altmarter. I'm the president of the Fire Department. First, I want to thank the council for letting us uh, speak here tonight. Um, by no means do we ever want to downplay the improvements and training and accomplishments and just overall all the good that Bill has done for the fire department over the years, over his 30 plus years of service. That was never in question. Um, we all looked up to him as a mentor, myself included. He's younger than me, but I looked up to him a lot. Um, we talked a lot. Um, he's a very good guy when it came to running a scene and um, knowing what to do and how to mitigate hazardous situations. I mean, he, he's a very good guy. Um, but, it, you know, the members who voted to remove him or asked him to resign, because he did resign, we didn't kick him out, he resigned as the chief. Um, for the same people that have been the men for the last 20 years. Um, that's basically what it was. I mean, if you guys don't get reelected, you don't get reelected. We move on. So that's what we were sort of hoping it would happen. But uh, in the last three months, we've added seven new firefighters <coughs> um, to our roster. We added one last year. We added seven in three months. So there's a new wave of things going on. We added five new associate members, your know, wives and spouses and people from the community don't necessarily firefight, they want to be part of the fire department. Um, as everyone spoke, it's a common thing. Morale is up. Um, Bill was a very good leader when it came to a scene, but he was not a real good people person, and over time, it just sort of took its toll on everybody. And we got to the point where, um, you know, the whole fire department was going to walk out if he didn't resign. We had guys not coming calls, and he was going to be on the scene. That's a huge problem. I mean, that's, for whatever reason, someone's not coming to the call is a problem. But if you're not coming to the call because the chief's there, I mean, it needs to be addressed. We've had numerous conversations with him, hoping to at least apologize publicly to the department in, the meetings, not publicly, but in our meetings, uh, numerous times, and, you know, just making efforts to change, but it, it just got to the point where people were tired of, you know, the harassment, be it, uh, you know, verbally, emotionally, in other ways that we can't speak of here. Um, <clears throat> we never had standard operating procedures. We're in the, probably the, the most dangerous profession there is in the world. And we had no procedures to guide us. It was all in Bill's head. And it was supposed to be an ours. Well, we never had anything in paper to learn it. And if you, didn't, if you did something wrong, you got crucified. Um, we had SOGs written up under our new chief in less than months. And they're actually at the printer, they got printed today. Um, that everyone's gonna have and everyone's gonna know inside and out. Um, you know, we all, they all know their jobs, but there's so much to it, there's so many different aspects that uh, you need to have rules to follow and guidelines to follow, which we have now, we never had before. Um, we're getting good turnout for all of our calls because people were there, people were there, they want to be there. Yeah. Um, we had blue car training with Mark Levin, which is sort of like the newest response training to in, you know, how to run a scene. Uh, we got a pump ops class coming, so more people are trained in pump operations. We got hazmat coming. Um, you know, to address some of the accusations that came forth, he was not asked to resign about the grant. That was about five percent of the issue that we had. 95% was the harassment and the way he treated everybody. Um, the issue with the grant was I out in, in 10 minutes by myself and the treasurer. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was a small problem, but that was that. Um, as far as our community day, I'm just addressing some of the things that we brought up. Brought up. My back was so sore on Sunday after community day, I had to lay in bed all day. 
from picking kids up and putting them in the truck. Now, I'm not the most you know, nimble person, but it, we spent the day showing kids what's going on. You know, showing the trucks, showing them. They, anyone comes out of the station at any time, come was there, they take the kids and show them around, you know, get them a fire hat, and just sort of make, try to make a good impression on them. Um, as far as, you know, having the borough's interest in mind, when Bill was the active chief, he had the interest of the borough in mind. There was no doubt about it, public safety, uh, first and foremost. But after he resigned, he had covert meetings with all of the other fire departments in the area, and specifically for the reason of telling them not to respond to bridge bill for mutual aid costs. If that's having the community's interest in mind, that's not undermining the fire department, undermining public safety. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, he's told lots of people, some are in this room, that he's going to stand by and watch us fail. He's going to do whatever it takes. Um, but all the meetings we've had with the public safety board, they know the validity of what we're talking about. Um, there's also an over the spending issue. We're volunteer, we try to raise money any way we can. Um, it's not the easiest thing. It costs a lot to keep the fire department rolling and keep the, the equipment going and training and, equip and uh, you know, personal protection equipment and everything else we have to get. Um, you know, we had spending freezes and in, in, in on the books, in writing, <coughs> in meetings, on, you know, through the minutes, he would ignore them and just spend money wastefully. Um, he, what he bought was things that were useful to the fire department that we didn't necessarily need, we couldn't afford. Um, since he's left, we have a $51,000 increase in our checking account. That's something I heard of. We even have $50,000 in there, let alone a $50,000 increase in a matter of three and a half months. Um, <coughs> Upon resigning, he quit responding to calls. He was a borough, or he is a borough employee, and he would be the first one on scene any call when he was the chief. After he lost that position, he stood idly by, watching with my own eyes. We had a fire call on uh, Coolidge by Walker Run Road. He was 100 yards away in his truck, sitting in his truck, watching us to criticize us. Never once tried to respond. Thank God it wasn't an active fire, and nobody was trapped. But he wants to stand by and watch us fail. Um, yeah, does that mind the safety of, of the uh, the safety of, of the township or the borough um, by repeatedly, you know, we've endured uh, indecent, profane, physical, and verbal abuse in public by members of his family. That's unheard of. That's, that's completely ridiculous. We've taken a high road this whole time. We've never said anything about what's going on other than talking to the borough and asking for advice. Um, we, you know, we're at this point now where we just we would like him to, we would have liked him to resign his chief and stay on and be a firefighter and pass on all the knowledge he has. We give him but, an opportunity. Pardon? You sent him a letter that said that he's no longer allowed to be a member, so you never gave him that opportunity. Well, that was after. He's, well, Just I, I, gave you, I gave you the, I forwarded you the politeness and not speak when I'm speaking, not quite a person. And we did. He ended up getting thrown out, or he ended up getting um, expelled, was the word that was in the bylaws, for disclosing all of our internal business. And everybody, all the other chiefs, all the other departments, uh, you know, he's called the county, EM, or county emergency disaster uh, official <coughs> telling him to try to plead his case. Uh, I don't, you know, we don't know what to do at this point, but, you know, we are just tired of the harassment. That's why he was <coughs> asked to resign. Um, as far as uh, you know, we're 110% committed to this community. We are day and night, no matter what weather it is, what the call is, in the middle of you know your anniversary dinner, Christmas, we go to Thanksgiving dinner, we go to a call. And, and Bill did too. That's, I'm never gonna take any of that away from him. That's our job. That's what we sign on for when we ask to be a voluntary fire department. Um, but we had we had members when he was the chief not responding to calls because he was gonna be there. Now it's completely different. Um, you know, everyone is 
our turnout as far as the, the amount of people coming to calls is up. The speed at which we get there is up. Um, much more people coming to training, you know, all that. So it, it is a new mindset and a new, uh, a new feeling, let's say, at the department. Um, in closing, I just wanted to reiterate to the citizens of Woods Bowl that we're 110% committed to providing a safer, better level of service to our community that you guys expect and deserve, as well as providing mutual aid to neighboring communities in time of need. The direction of our fire department is more clear and concise than it's ever been in our 100 plus year history. Um, no mutual aid agreements were broken. We've actually added companies to our responses. Um, so there's actually more coverage now by more people than we ever had before, uh, despite the lobbying to not respond. Um, they've all taken a high road also in the departments and continue to do so. So thank you very much for your time. If anybody has any questions, at open house, you guys can come down, ask whatever questions you want to anybody, take a tour of the building, what have you. Um, we just wanted to come and stay our case to try to alleviate everybody's uh, misconception that, you know, that somebody's not going to respond or they're not going to be trained. We're all the same people we were when he was there. We're not just one person. So um, no one person you know, makes and breaks an organization. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate all the words spoken on, for, on behalf of Bill, you know, on behalf of the fire department. Um, you know, on, as far as console, I just want to you know, just, just make some things perfectly clear. There is nobody up here that will argue on what Bill has done for this community over the years. He's a personal friend of mine. I've known him for a long time since high school. Um, this is not a personal matter. I have known Ray not that long. Um, so this is not a personal issue. Nobody's going to argue what what kind of firefighter Bill is, um, but this is an internal matter amongst the fire department. If you go to any other community in their volunteer fire department, their commissioners and councilmen in their town are not going to dictate who is running their department. They have nominations at the beginning of the year. They nominate who their chief is, who the attendant, all that stuff, and the membership votes on we're you know I've talked to Bill I'm not happy with what happened um, if, if there was a better way this could happen we would have loved to see it um, we would have loved to see Bill still in the organization but again that is something amongst the, the volunteer fire fire firefighters in our community you know, these are all of them are members who volunteer their time hours hundreds of hours of training risk their lives to protect our community and that should not be discounted one day. So that's all I'm going to say on behalf of council. I don't know if, if Ray, if you had anything that you wanted to put. I'll wait for my report. Okay. And uh, with that said, um, so that is our report. As uh, I just want to make mention a couple of things um, in regards to earlier statements on, on the whole subject dealing with the fire department and Bill. Um, there is absolutely no question that bill has done amazing things for this borough for this fire department uh countless time and hours that he's put in time away from his family uh there's there's no question of that um if, if this particular point we're, we're not going to elaborate as to why the changes were made um that that may change in the future uh, we don't want it to but we want to concentrate on the future and we want to continue to do everything that we've done for 116, 118 years, whatever it is, uh, for this for this borough. So rest assured that the commitment of each and every one of these members is just as strong, if not stronger today, than it was when Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department started here in this borough. Thank you. Uh, Southbridge EMS, Dan Miller. Uh, hopefully you got stats today by email, so we'll get those out to you regularly now. Um, otherwise, no report. Uh, Bridgeville Historical Society.